welcome to episode 70 of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B. Today's guest is Jen Foster. Jen is the owner of Elite Online Publishing and CEO of Biz Social Boom, companies dedicated to helping business owners of all sizes thrive in today's highly technical world of product and service promotion. As owner and CEO of Elite Online Publishing, she is passionate about helping busy entrepreneurs, business leaders, and professionals to create, publish, and market their book to build their business and brand. She encourages new authors to share their stories, knowledge, and expertise to help others. With her marketing and digital background, Jen uses the best strategies for her clients' books to boost their sales and marketing platforms and make them number one bestsellers. A graduate of Utah State University, Jen is an award-winning web designer, author, and sought-after speaker. Jen has been named one of America's premier experts and is highlighted in the Dan Kennedy book, Stand Apart. Jen Foster was recently named one of Utah's thought leaders in the book Innovate Utah by Global Village. Coming from a family of successful entrepreneurs, her grandfather started the Maverick Country Store oil and gas station chain, which is still thriving today. Jen grew up around successful businesses and understands from the ground up what it takes to create, run, and promote winning companies. Combining her education, knowledge, and lifelong experience, Jen teaches people and businesses globally how they can be found in today's virtual world how they can engage prospects on their terms, and how to continue to connect and follow up with prospects to convert them to customers. Jen is a single mom who loves spending time with her three children, traveling, and experiencing the great outdoors. And now, Cody B. Hello, everybody. This is Cody Bateman. Welcome to a brand new episode of our Relationship Marketing Podcast. As always, super excited for the guests that we have on today. You've already heard her name and her bio, and uh, we're going to bring her on in just a second. Before I do, I'd like to always do a shout out to all of our listeners and thank you for your participation and your desire to become better in the world. You know, we're, we're, we're part of a, a mission here. We're part of a cause to create kindness in the world, to reach out in kindness to other people and act on our promptings to do nice things to other people without expectation of anything in return. And, and the result of that has turned into one of the best relationship marketing systems in the world. And uh, so this is what this show is all about, is what relationship marketing is. We, we have an amazing guest on with us today. I'm super excited uh, to bring on uh, here now, Jen Foster, who is the CEO of Elite Online Publishing. Jen, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me on. We are super excited, Jen, for this. You know, th th you're one of those smart people. You've got a couple of companies. You have the uh, Elite Online Publishing, and you so you help uh, startup writers or, or existing authors to be, become published and to help sell their books. You also have a digital marketing agency called Biz Social Boom. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I've had that for over 12 years now. And we were talking a little in the pre-show. Th those two kind of coincide, I'll bet, you know, you, so you have a publishing business, you help people get their books published. By the way, let's, let's just start there. What, yeah. what does it mean to publish a book? What does the, what does the word publish even mean? What does that mean? Right. Well, you know, it means a lot of things when you're published or a published author, you're a public figure, you have a book, it's available for sale and you have something to share. You have a message, right? And when you're published, it, it simply means that you have a message you can share with other people and those people can easily access it, whether it's through Amazon or other iBooks, Google Books, you know, wherever you buy books, Barnes and Noble, and they can buy that book and, and read your message and learn more about you. So what does a publishing company precisely do for an author? Yeah. So, you know, we're different. Some people might call us an, a hybrid publishing company. We're not per se, the traditional publisher that you're used to, like the Random House or Hay House or whatever, all the different names there are, right? Um, we're a hybrid publish, publishing company, which is more of a marketing, like you said before, marketing and publishing mixed together. Because most authors and the way that Amazon and online world works today is you can be self-published, so you can have your own business name be your publisher, or we can use our name if, if you prefer. But we, we basically publish your book everywhere that books are available for sale. And we help you market that book to be able to get enough sales and to know how to market it to make money and get ROI on the book. So most of our books are self-published, 
Um, and they, we can do nonfiction and fiction, but most of them are nonfiction because it's a, it's almost like a business card, right? You want to use it for your business, either where share your message or sell another service or product, right? And so that's kind of what we're using it as a tool. We're using the book as a tool. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of self-published authors today, especially use, use a book as a tool. And especially mm -hmm. if you're an entrepreneur in any niche, you know, it's always good to have a book. And I, I know that's part of what you teach and mm -hmm. it's so powerful. It's, it's, you know, it, it, uh, it gives you credibility to have, you know, your content in a book that you can offer. Mm -hmm. Haven't you seen like the, the self publishing world is like exploded, right? Like, like, Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally disrupted the publishing world. Right. And a lot of major publishing companies actually are creating a hybrid or self publishing arm because of all of this and changing their name, you know, having a different name attached to it or a sister company or whatever you're, you want to call it, but they're doing it because, you know, Amazon has disrupted the way that you can publish. And, and there's other companies too, self publishing companies, besides Amazon that you can publish your book with. But the, the purpose of it is really to make sure that you have your book everywhere books are sold. So, you know, some of the traditional publishers or the old school, you could say, they might publish your book for you and give you a thousand books for your garage, but the only place to buy that book is on their website, right? And so that doesn't make any sense. Or you gotta put it on your website and then you gotta mail the book to them and ship it and all that. That's a lot of headache. So with the print on demand, you know, with the way Amazon works and the other um, distributors that we use, we can have books on every platform online for sale and it's all print on demand. So the books that you have, you only order when you want to use them, whether you're speaking or you want to mail out a hundred to your, to certain lists that you have or whatever it is, right? Or you want to give it for free on a website for shipping only. You see that model all the time, right? So when you say print on demand, who, who's actually doing the printing? Yeah. So, you know, every uh, distributor has printing companies that work for them. So if you really dissect how Amazon works, Amazon doesn't do the printing, but they have contracts with different printers. And this is how they were set up in the very beginning and why they disrupted the whole thing. Right. right. They have contracts with different printers. So I can order a book from amazon.uk and it's printed in the UK and shipped to the person who ordered it all right. within a week, or if they have Prime, like in the U.S. and Canada, two-day shipping, you know, they're not going to print the book in California if it's being shipped to New York. They're going to print the book somewhere closer, right? I'm sure they have someone in the middle or something, right? You know, we've been, uh, at Send Out Cards, we've been tempted many times to get into that space because we are a variable print-on-demand company. Yeah. You know, we right. do variable print, and so mm -hmm. we have the capacity to print books on demand, but Mm -hmm. you know, that's really not our core business. Our core business is to help people act on their promptings, reach out in kindness with cards and gifts and other means. However, uh, people can act on their promptings too by educating others. And a book is a big part of that. And so it's funny because we've always kind of been tempted and should we get into it? Or, you know, we've got the capabilities. I mean, I'm a self-published author, author and I've been fortunate uh, and we've done all of our own publishing. We, we haven't now, I probably do that different today. I probably hire someone like you today uh, because, uh, because you're an expert at it and you know precisely what to do and how to do it. And I wouldn't have had to go through the learning curves. Mm -hmm. We've been fortunate, you know, I've sold several hundred thousand copies of two different books mm -hmm. and uh, all self published without really, I mean, we've been on Amazon, but, but, a lot of it's just been through our network of people, right. uh, but most people don't have that kind of a network to, right. to put their book into. So yeah. what would your, what would your advice be? Okay. So you got a, a person that's got a book in them and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what would be, and, and they know they've got to get the book done and they need a way to get the book out to others what's your punch list advice? What would you advise? Cause I'll tell you what, there, there, we have a ton of listeners right now mm -hmm. that are chomping at the bit, wondering if they should write a book or not. And, and how do I do it? So what's, what's right. your punch list advice to them? Yeah. Well, just like everything in business, your very first step is the why, you know, why are you writing it? What's the purpose behind it? Is it to share the message? Is it to make money? Is it to sell a digital training course? Is it to tell people about you and who you, what you do and why you do it. You know, what is the purpose, the why? 
So once you have that, then it's the, who are you writing it for? And, and that's kind of the two things always in business, right? It's like, why and who? So who are you writing the book for? Is it to everyone? Well, that's the wrong answer, right? You got to have that nailed down um, demographic, whether it's you call it an avatar or your ideal client, whatever you want to call it. You got to know who you're speaking to. And then the third thing is getting it out, getting the content out, like figuring out what's my content? What are the chapters of my book? What should I write about? And that is really simple to do nowadays because of technology. So if you're a writer and you love to write longhand in a journal or type it out because you just love typing and your, your flow of thought goes fast, then do it that way. But if you're like some people like me, I like to talk a lot and I, I do like to write, but I like to talk a lot. So if I have an outline and I know what I'm talking about, I can talk my book. And so using resources like otter.ai, which is an app, otter, like O-T-T-E-R, otter or even Evernote or your notes on your phone, whatever you want to use, even Google Docs has a talk to text feature and Microsoft, I think Microsoft Word just did the same thing. You get to talk to text. So you can just talk out your whole book. It will transcribe it in real time. And then if you're an awesome editor and writer, you can take that transcription and fix it, or you can send it to a ghostwriter editor to help you or have that second person to help you get that. Now you're, how you, want it. you offer ghostwriter service, right? Yeah, we actually have a team of ghostwriters and editors that we refer people to. We like to do the, we, they're all freelance. So we like to just refer them and get, make the connection because it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can't have a three-way conversation when it comes to editing. It has to be the author and the editor one-on-one -on -one conversation. So we do have a team of editors that we go to and refer to. There's a local company here. We love using Eschler editing and they're, they're awesome. They have a whole team of editors. Um, but we have, you know, a handful that we'll, we'll refer people to depending on their subject matter. So how did you get started doing this? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a fun story. Um, we've been publishing books for now five years and we've helped over a hundred authors become bestseller on Amazon, as well as we started publishing, um, kind of like low content books, like guest books and journals and, um, you know, planners and that kind of thing. And we started that about five years ago too. So we have 2,600 of those <laughs> called elite yeah. journals. If you're looking for those on Amazon. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, probably 2013 when, uh, I was asked to be a part of a book. It was a book with Dan Kennedy. He's a marketing guru. Mm -hmm. He's a copyright specialist in marketing. And I got asked to be a chapter in his book. And so I wrote that chapter and it changed my marketing business. My, my digital marketing agency, it just exploded because now I'm the expert. Now I have a book with my picture with Dan Kennedy on the front and I just got a ton more clients. And even people calling me and saying, I own a marketing agency and I'm doing it wrong. I read your chapter and I really need to have you white label my, your service, you know? So mm -hmm. it really did change my business. And then a year later I was challenged to write my own book and then I kind of got addicted. So I've been writing a book, like one or two books every year, pretty much. We have a new one coming out in a couple of weeks and it's called um, Podcast Authorized. It's how to turn your podcast into a book. And so using a podcast right to get more clients and leads and with your book. So your newest book is to called Podcast Authorized. Yeah. And where can our listeners find that? Yeah, on May 21st, it'll be released on Amazon. So they can just type in Podcast Authorized or type in Jen Foster with two N's on Amazon and you'll find that. What we is can your... also provide the link once it comes out. Um. 14 time national bestseller. Does that mean 14 books? It does. Yep. It means 14. So you've books. written 14 books. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your favorite one and what's, which one has sold the most? I would say my favorite one is books to bucks because it's the top 21 ways to make money with a book. And I love the tagline on that one. We have it in parentheses, even if you haven't written it yet. And that's my favorite one because Amazon has this really cool feature called the pre-order or pre-sale. And I'm sure that you've bought in a DVD or some, something with a pre-order, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. available, but you ordered it. And then when it came available, then they shipped it to you, right? right? So Amazon has this feature. So initially you could, if you have your book title, which is very important and your book cover, which is also very important, everyone judges a book by the cover and you have to have the right title because Amazon is a search engine, right? Search engine, meaning Google or Yahoo, like Amazon, you type something in and it's going to come up. So you got to have keywords in your title. 
right? So if you have that title and that book cover and a description, you can pre-sell your book. And Amazon used to say you had to upload that book within 90 days. Well, they extended that to over a year now. So you could initially sell your book right now that you've never even written yet, haven't written. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's favorite really cool. was book to bucks. What's, what's, to bucks. The, what's your most successful book? I would say our most successful book is one of our story starters. We have five story starters, well actually seven because we added some baby ones. And the story starters are just prompts, journal prompts to help you to know what to write in your book. And so our, our number one best-selling one is how to write your story of accomplishment and success. And it has over 50 questions on how to get your book, you know, how to get your book written, what, what, what kind of answers, you know, what kind of questions. And initially, if you have no idea what to write in a book, that's all you need is some prompts, right? You just need some guidance on what you want to put in your book. Wow, that's great. So you, you follow your own advice. You're very much niche oriented, obviously, <laughs> by the title of, of your books. You're very tuned in on specific niches of writing books, publishing books, how, the how-tos of doing it. You also have an online course, right? We do. We do. So if someone comes to us and they don't quite have enough money to work with us one-on-one -on -one and have us do all the heavy lifting for them, but they kind of want to do it on their own, we have a do-it-yourself training course. It's called the Book Writing Fast Pass. And that digital course, they can go through all the videos and they can learn how to write and publish and become a bestseller on their own. If they're, Because some people are do-it-yourselfers and they know. But if you're not computer savvy and you don't know how to do stuff online, you probably want us to do it for you or you find someone else, you know, who can do that for you. The book writing fast pass. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you go about, cause you own a digital agency. So I'm sure that you, you know, you, you have a special way that you market. Like for instance, this, mm -hmm. this online course called the book writing fast pass. Mm -hmm. um, our listeners are very much interested in online courses. In fact, we're, um, beginning to offer online courses and different things like that. So mm -hmm. our, our audience is very interested in not only where to find good online courses, but maybe even how to get into online yeah. uh, teaching online courses. Um, so how do you market, how, how do you market the book writing fast pass? Yeah, well, it's right. A high ticket item, right? Yeah, it's around two thousand dollars. Um, I think right now online it's listed at twenty nine ninety seven. But if you contact me, I can give you a discount code. Usually, when usually you know how we market this is we speak on stages. So right now we're not speaking because you know everything shut down. <laughs> right. That'll date this podcast. But once um, when we're all when we are speaking on stages, we'll have a discount from what it says online, and we'll sell it from stage for nineteen ninety seven. Okay. So you sell it from stage. Do you have like any marketing funnels or things that you do online or how, do, how does that yeah, work? Yeah, we, we, we have done that in the past. Um, we, we usually sell it more of a backup service. So if a client, like I said, doesn't want to work with us one-on-one -on -one or doesn't quite have the funds for that or can't get sponsorships, since a lot of times you can get sponsorship depending on your book, then we'll refer them to the book writing fast pass and they can do that on their own. But there is lots of different ways to, to market your you know, visual training course, whether it's through a, a, a landing page and some funnel, or there's different, different sites we've used in the past, like gumroad.com is a cool one to check out. You can sell digital training courses there and PDFs. You can sell PDFs, which is kind of cool. And same with teachable.com. I like that one too. Of course, so you've all heard of Udemy and there's a bunch. Of right. Them. Yeah. There's a bunch of platforms out there you can build courses on. What, what did you build your course on? Yeah, we, we actually used a private website. So it's a, I believe it's, um, well, we started with one called Wish, Wish Membership, but now um, we just have it all in integrated into our website. So there's lots of platforms available that you, you can go and, and it's kind of cookie cutter, templated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. where you can build your courses and even get advice from the expert course people on how to set your course up. Yeah, I think a lot of people are looking right now, a big one that everyone knows the name of is ClickFunnels. So not only do they have membership capability and course capability, but they have the landing page and the funnel and all that built in. Right. Or Infusionsoft is another one. Kajabi, I really like Kajabi. I've done that for a few clients. Yeah. So you actually will, will recommend some of these, I call them platforms. Yeah. You'll recommend some of these platforms for your clients, mm -hmm. depending on what their needs are. Right. Yeah. 
Very, very good stuff. Interesting. So we are listening to Jen Foster, the CEO of Elite Online Publishing. She's the best-selling author of 14 books. We don't have time to list all of those. Her favorite <laughs> you can find them. <laughs> books to buck, bu books to bucks, which we ought to look at. Her brand new one's coming out on May 21st. Uh, that's titled Podcast Authorized, How to Turn Your Podcast into a Book. Is that right? Yep, or? That's right. Yeah. So and I think it's to build your businesses at the end of that. To build so your businesses. Yeah. So um, your favorite success story in regards to a client and their book. You yeah. told me to ask you that question. So yes. I'm going to, I give you one. I give you one that, <laughs> that you told me to ask, but I, I am very interested in, in learning. Yeah, you know, I kind of have too many. I got to think of which one I want to go for. Um, I, I really like Josh, um, they're one of our clients, Joshua, and then Lauren Golden. I'm trying to think of Laurel. I think Lauren Golden, I'll tell you Lauren Golden. So Lauren Golden came to us. She already had a following. She already had a platform. She had a digital training course that she already sold. I think her digital training course was 997. And she came to us with her book because she wanted to make sure that her followers knew her story, understood why she's doing what she's doing. And then the call to action in the book was to go and buy her course. So we published her book. She actually did there. We can do an ebook and paperback, or we can do an ebook paperback, hardback and audiobook edition. So she did all four of them. And which is really important because audiobooks are really coming out. You know, everyone loves audiobooks, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so we published her book. And it, of course it took off. She had her launch team. We call it a launch team. So it's like her followers are who's going to help you buy your book on launch day on your book launch day. And you know, they had, she had great support. They left her reviews. She really did. She did her part of helping the book get launched. Right. And what happened is she became an international best-selling author. I think she was in over 11 categories, which was really wow. awesome on Amazon. And then she had, it was about a week later, she does, so her digital training course, you know, they have phone calls and um, at the beginning of the call, they kind of go around and talk to each individual to see like where they're from and, and how they learned about the course. And she wrote, a week after she'd written the book, she, the person had said, I got your book on Amazon and I signed up for your course. So she made her sales right back, you know, right at the first week. So she's been doing it ever since. So that I would say that's probably one of my favorite stories of a client. Wow. That's great. This is exciting stuff. It's really neat. So yeah. you said you've been doing this for five years, but you started biz social boom first, right? You were in this. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started my digital marketing agency, I mostly focused on main street businesses. We had a few online companies, but most of them were main street businesses. And so that's what um, video marketing was kind of my focus. Um, and then, you know, videos started changing in like 2008, 2009, Google changed their algorithms and videos weren't like showing up on the first page of Google search anymore. You have to click the video tab. So then I started getting into more of the book thing and, and it's pretty fun story how I actually started the book publishing company. My business partner and I met at a marketing conference in San Diego and they encourage um, joint ventures and that kind of thing at that conference. And so she was on a hot seat on stage and she was talking about Dominican, in Dominican Republic, she had a villa, a private villa that she was renting out. And so I just, I thought in my head, I need to get to that villa, you know, and I need to figure out how to make money while I'm there. So we did a book writing um, retreat in Dominican and we had people come and they wrote their books and became bestseller in that week. And it, it just was a success from there. And that after we did that book writing retreat, then we joined forces and just started publishing books for other people. I had already published about five books for other people. And my business partner, she had three of her own books. And so we just got together and, and just started a, a publishing company. Wow. That's a great story. That mm -hmm. really is a great story. And congratulations on your success. You've done some Thank great you. work really quickly. You know, a five year period of time, you've uh, got quite a track record going for yourself. Yeah. Which, uh, and what, so what is the key, what's, what's the key to that quick success? I mean, it, you know, it's funny when you say quick success, there's no such thing as overnight success. You've been right. doing it for five years on the publishing side, but 
what, what, what are the keys that got you to where you're at now? Yeah. Well, I think you probably know a lot of them because I'm sure you've been through the same stuff, but I think the number one for me is, you know, just keep going because, you know, you're going to have ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. It's not always amazing and it's not always, always bad, but you're going to have those ups and downs and it's just a matter of just keep going. You know, that's kind of what's kept us. Um, we've always been a debt-free company. We've never used uh, any money, you know, from, you know, credit cards or whatever, which has been really awesome. Um, but I think it's, it's really just about, you know, being focused and committed. So how do you stay focused, especially in your line of work where things are changing so rapidly? Yeah. They focused on, because one of the things, that's one of the things I've noticed, you know, the next shiny object comes yeah. in and right. you have a tendency to go like this. True. So how do you stay focused? Yeah, for, for me, it really is having a mentor, having someone that you can rely on and listen to their stuff and, and that is a good leader. And then the second thing would probably be, be a mastermind. So we've, we've belonged to a mastermind for three years now, and it really has helped us to push ourselves over the edge and to, and to really know what we want out of this. Did you create the mastermind or join one? We joined one. And where did you find it? You know, um, our mastermind that we belong to, we've been approached by a couple different ones and we've looked at a couple different ones to join, but the ones that we're, we're with actually were people that we met in those marketing conferences that we were going to. So we all kind of had the same mentor and one of the members, um, started his, own, started his own mastermind. And so we do one retreat a year and then we meet once uh, or every other week we meet on zoom. So is that, yeah. So, so it's a marketing type. There is some publishers that are involved in that, but most of them are for sure a marketing agency. Wow. So similar business, kind of a niche mastermind. Okay, so there's a lot of things that kind of intertwine with, with what you do. And it's, um, th these are things that are trending in the business world right now. You know, uh, writing a book to lend credibility to your expertise, whatever that is, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a big uh, plus. Uh, tying that book to well, having having um, uh, having the vehicles or, or excuse me, having the channels to sell that book in, which you specialize in as well. Mm -hmm. But then also connecting that book with uh, other offers, and we've already talked a little bit about the online course world. So a lot of that just kind of intertwines. You know, have a book, yeah. have an online course online course could maybe tie into services like in your business. Obviously you have books that you write mm -hmm. give the credibility. You have courses that you teach online at, with a high ticket item, but that leads to actual services provided for clients. Um, so, and that's just, those are kind of the building blocks today of a lot of specialty type of business. Mm -hmm. So, just going back real quick to the online, um, the online uh, publishing, excuse me, the online course world. Mm -hmm. So, because again, we have a huge interest in that right now. And um, you, you sell your own course as an individual course. So you're not part of somebody else's university or anything like that. You right. do your own course, you do it from your own sites. It's a high ticket item. Um, you use kind of a private platform to build that on. Mm -hmm. Do you have clients that do the same thing? So have you taken some of your clients through that same process where they, they set up an individual course that they sell? Yeah. And mm -hmm. do you have, do you have clients that you recommend that they put their course in a university of some kind? Yeah. I mean, it really depends on your target audience and deciding, you know, if you want to kind of share the wealth, so to speak, you know, some of those online um, programs have a fee to them. Some don't, right. You got so much a month or so much a year that you got to pay for those, um, which is similar to having it on your own website, right. You still got to pay for your domain and your hosting and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we really just kind of look at who their target audience is and decide what platform works best for them. So what are you seeing in terms of, cause I'm, I've been studying this a little bit and mm -hmm. there's kind of some things that are trending right now. What do you see in terms of, of uh, there's course, there's individual course sales. So you charge mm -hmm. a certain fee for a course. Mm -hmm. 
And then there, that what's becoming more and more popular right now is the whole subscription base. Everybody in the world right. wants to create a subscription, it seems. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I have a subscription to wash my truck, you know. Right. I just pay 30 bucks uh, yeah. <laughs> so everybody in the world has a subscription and the online course world is doing the same thing. It's like they're yeah. going into a subscription base versus a one-time fee or a larger fee. What, what's your, what, where do you see that going? Do you see it more? Cause I, I've heard from many people in your space, in the online uh, course space saying it's getting harder and harder to sell high ticket individual courses because more people get into the subscription side. What, what's your thoughts? Right. Well, you know, it really is who that, who that target audience is. Are they, is there, is your target audience more of the audience who wants to pay, you know, a one-time high ticket fee and then have the course and, um, and, and is it a course where you're constantly uploading new stuff or is it just these 10 modules, you know, and that's it, right? Like what exactly is your course about and who is it for? Um, but I would say that there's, there's a lot of individuals where if your target audience is more of the mainstream who doesn't have a ton of money, you know, it's going to be easier to sell them a 30 or a hundred dollar a month type of thing. Right. So it kind of depends on your target audience and what you're selling it is really is what are you actually offering them? Do you, you, do you have any subscription stuff that you do or? We don't. Um, we, we've tried that model on a couple things. Um, we do actually have one concierge service for our authors that is a subscription Well, they'll sign up for, you know, 12 months and, concierge more of, we'll just basically do all their, you know, book ordering and update their Amazon author page and whatever they kind of need, you know, updates on their website, that kind of a thing. So that's, I guess, kind of a subscription, but we don't have any subscription based model right now for a digital training course. So you're a, you're a single mother, right? I am. Yeah. I've got three teenagers right now. Three teenagers. What ages? Yeah. And Yeah. I have a daughter in college. She's 19. And then I've got two boys there. 16 and 15. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Fun ages. So, Online school. <laughs> Online school right now. now. <laughs> yeah, right okay, now. So, so I'm just fascinated at people like you. I, <laughs> it blows my <laughs> mind. I have a daughter who's 32 years old. She has two young children, ages mm -hmm. uh, eight and five, mm -hmm. boy and a girl. And, you know, and again, she's homeschooling right now mm -hmm. because pandemic and and she's the type of mother that she's super mom she does everything in the world for her kids mm -hmm. she's also an entrepreneur she works mm -hmm. for one of my companies but she has her own company she has mm -hmm. she's just finished writing a book algorithm of a it's unbelievable awesome. like i'm blown away and i and i see you in that same place it's like it's how do you do how do you do it like seriously how do you yeah. manage home and this business, and you've had great success over a five-year uh, span there. How do you do it? Yeah, it's a lot of time blocking, and it's a lot of, um, you know, they say it's not good to be ADD, but honestly, it is good. So I can multitask very well. So, you know, in between, when you're a mom, you have to just figure out how to work it, right? So depending on how late you stay up or how early you wake up, and just having your structure and your, you know, your systems, it's like, just like a business, you got to have it all set up. So whether you're switching laundry in between your meetings or, you know, you you have certain days you do meetings and certain days that you're, you know, you only do phone calls or you only do, you have different, you know, time blocks, right? right. So kind of like that default calendar, I guess you could call it. So do you involve your kids with, with your business, some of the other routines or? Yeah. Yeah. My, um, all, all we've always been, I've always owned my own business. So even when I was married, we owned a retail store retail i should say chain we owned a bunch of retail kiosks and so we've always involved our kids and stuff just to teach them entrepreneurship but yeah they my daughter was our intern for two years of high school so she worked about 10 hours a week doing blog posts and stuff like that now you've got quite a story like i, I was going to ask you where this entrepreneurialism came from but based on your bio i happen to kind of know yeah <laughs> yeah your family story a little bit yeah, so my uh, my dad and my grandpa both were very good, um, big influences for entrepreneurship for me. Uh, my grandpa started Maverick Country Stores, so if you know, I guess their tagline now is Adventures First Stop, but Maverick um, started was, was started by my grandfather, so my mom's dad. And so my dad worked for them for a little while, um, 
And then, you know, he, he left the company because he was the in-law and he kind of did some, some other things, actually Amway, so multi-level, um, and did very well with that. And then he's always kind of owned his own business. And so that's kind of where I got that. Mm. So in my, with my former husband, we started retail stores and sold watches and clocks and sunglasses on kiosks and in inline stores. And then when I got divorced, I, I had my marketing company and he had the watch company. So I just said, you take the watches. I'm keeping my marketing company. And it was an easy, oh, that's good. easy to clean. Yeah. That's very, very good. Well, I'll tell you what, we are uh, very, very thankful that you took the time to be with us today. And uh, we're inspired by stories like you and uh, just appreciate all that you're doing out there. I always like to close, by the way, for you just tuning in, um, Jen Foster, EliteOnlinePublishing.com, as well as Biz Social Boom, which is a digital marketing business, 14-time uh, national bestseller, incredible stuff. So go to EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Do you have a website for the Biz Social Boom? Yeah, you can go to bizsocialboom.com or the other one. Um, the other one that I really like is just onlinemarketingutah.com. So if you need any help with those kinds of service or you just want to hear and, and uh, be exposed to an inspiring story, check those things out. Um, so this is the way I like to close all of my podcasts, most of my podcasts, depending on how they go, is at the end of... Uh, at the end of the interview, I like to just give you the floor. You know, I've, I've been asking you questions and, and I always like to give you the opportunity at the end to drop the mic. You know, mm -hmm. this is your chance to anything that you feel like uh, our listeners need to hear right now. We're, we're living in a pandemic time. I know that we've learned some valuable lessons through that, some really, really good lessons uh, through the pandemic time. Um, and I guess I'll just close with that. Anything that you'd like to share with us in terms of how to deal with the pandemic that we're in and, and, um, and where do you see the trends in business going post pandemic? Yeah, well, I would say, you know, take advantage of the time right now that you have. I mean, a lot of people are saying they have a lot of extra time. Um, when you have that extra time, take advantage of that write down, you know, take your top 10 frequent last questions and top 10 should ask questions of your business and write those down and get, get the answers and stories to each one. You can do Otter or even Zoom. You can record yourself talking and record it and upload it to otter.ai and it will transcribe the whole thing. I mean, use this time to actually share your message and, and get your story out and get your book written. If you've been thinking about it, they say 80% of people think about writing a book, but only 1% actually do it. So be that 1%. That's great. I actually contradicted myself with that last question. I said I was going to give you the floor, and then I asked you a specific question. <laughs> so. <Okay. laughs> so I'm going to give you the floor now. That, now anything that you would like to share with this group that you feel like is an important message, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I really think it really is what I was saying before. Just if you have a message in, or you have – something you want to share, whether it's your story or a, a, a message you want to put in a book, or if you have something you're trying to sell and it, it's, strugg it's struggling to sell, maybe a book is the answer and a tool for that. So just, just be committed and get it done. So is there a book in everybody? I think there is. I mean, everyone has different experiences in life. And I mean, even just listening to, my, we used to record, you know, I'm sure you've recorded your grandparents on tape back in the day. And every story they have would be a book, right? Or an episode on Netflix, right? <laughs> so, right. depending on who's telling the story. <laughs> well, Jen, it's been an absolute delight to visit with you today. Uh, our listeners are very appreciative, I'm sure. And to keep doing what you're doing, you know, be that inspiration to, to people and, and keep serving and helping people along the way. Appreciate uh, all, of, all of your service and what you provide for us all. Uh, so there you have it, my friends. Eagle One uh, is, uh, that's one of my catchphrases. I call myself Eagle One. Uh, Eagle One is going to check out now, and I just want you all to know how much I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you for listening in every week, and especially appreciate you for the service that you provide to people in our communities. 
uh, for giving yourself away. You know, part of what we say here all the time is find out who you are and give yourself away to others. Jen, you're a great example of that. You, you're just, you're following what I call the inner prompting. You have an inner voice that speaks to you and tells you who you are, tells you you're, you're genius and you're living that. You're, you're, you're fulfilling that. You know, you're following your inner prompting and you're, and you're giving yourself away to people in the business community. And, and that's, that's why I think you're so successful is because that's what you do. You, you, you just do you. Yeah. And uh, you're very good at that. And I appreciate it. So let's all be inspired by that. And all of our listeners go out there and change the world by being kind to people. And uh, we'll see you on another episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Enjoyed this episode of the Relationship Marketing Podcast with Cody B. Be sure to subscribe to the show and leave a review so that together we can get this message, The Power of Human Connection, out to the world. You can find Cody's new book, The Power of Human Connection, on Amazon or the Send Out Cards gift store.